and silver as well. What is going on? Many people would be sitting back thinking, I thought these were traditional safe haven plays. If anything was going to see some positive action, it would be like the likes of the precious metals, but they're getting absolutely slammed. James, you've hit the nail on the head. Today was all about commodities. If we have a look across the market, it was a commodity space that was absolutely smashed. And the smaller ordinaries, which is made up mostly of the miners, um, down by a massive 4.3%. We've seen copper prices also down by 25% in the last three weeks. We are going to see a CME, Chicago Milton mercantile exchange uh, margin hike on copper of around about 18 percent so we did see copper prices continuing to fall and I love my chart so if I can bring up one chart and this just shows the last five years and I want to highlight the global financial crisis and how different sectors are um, moved and I just want to highlight the financial sector across the material space or the uh, resource space I've got the financial sector in blue and you can see during the global financial uh, crisis the financial sector was the first area to fall. In fact, if you have a look at the resource area, it took another eight months before it peaked while financials were continuing to fall and then it uh, seemed to bottom around about the same time. We've seen the same thing here where financials have been under pressure quite substantially and we've seen significant divergence between the financial sector excluding the property sector uh, index and the uh, material space but we are seeing now the commodity space starting to play a bit of catch up and unfortunately that's been bad news for the Australian share market we've swung from a gain of one percent today to a loss of one percent mainly on the bait back of those commodity based stocks. So Julia taking a look at, at previous at, at the past I suppose action would you expect the commodities uh, to continue to fall to start to, to catch up even more with the losses the financials have seen and, and what does that mean then for some of our big miners? I think there are a number of things driving the commodity space at the moment. First of all, if we have a look at hedge funds and mutual funds, we are seeing cash holdings at record lows. So when we do see fund redemptions, what we are seeing is selling of assets, and that's selling of all assets, including that of commodities. Secondly, there's a lot of concerns in terms of global growth. We did see those flash PMI numbers coming out of China. And I guess that decoupling theory once again going out the door. We saw that decoupling theory raise its head during the global financial crisis, and then we saw it thrown out again and in fact if we have a look at the Shanghai Composite Index this is the chart for the last 52 weeks and today the Shanghai Composite has reached the lowest level since July last week so significantly underperforming the rest of the market and finally it's a currency uh, it's a currency play as well we know that silver the, go the uh, gold mainly traded in US dollar terms and what we are seeing is a, an aversion to the euro at the moment in fact a tumble in the euro versus the US dollar and a strengthening in the US dollar unfortunately Unfortunately, usually has negative correlation with these underlying commodity prices so once again a negative so I think th things that are concerning the commodities market are the, the strong US dollar and the run into the safe haven of the US dollar that we're seeing at the moment concerns about global growth and concerns about China as well classic defensive is it the likes of the, the health care stocks and so forth I know Woolies and West farmers did pretty well today well, one of the themes that has emerged in the last couple of sessions as the Aussie dollar has continued to tumble down is that exporters have been doing well. So those companies making their funds offshore. And if we have a look at what's happened in the Aussie dollar in the last five years, this is what it looks like. You can see that during the global uh, financial crisis we saw the Aussie dollar at a low of just 60.1 cents and then of course this year we saw it reaching that high above 110 so a gain of 85 percent there unfortunately the month of September not looking very good for the Aussie dollar at all we've seen a loss of more than nine percent and of course those companies which have been under stress because of the high currency are the ones to benefit when it starts to fall so if we have a look across the market stocks like CSL cochlear trading higher in the healthcare space and that was green uh, Today we also saw News Corporation gaining ground, QBE insurance, Brambles was up for most of the session before succumbing to weakness uh, by the end. But all those uh, companies which do have revenue from offshore, the majority of their revenue from offshore, do be seem to be benefiting from that tumble in the Aussie dollar. So some of the few bright green spots on the market today were those areas uh, impacted on by the Aussie dollar and I guess a falling in the Aussie dollar acts like an interest rate cut on the Australian economy. We also saw some gains in the banks that's, but as uh, Michael mentioned that's probably some short uh, covering and if we have a look at the banks yes they have high yields of between around about eight to eight and a half percent but then again you have to consider that the share prices have tumbled 20 percent so more than offsetting uh, the, the very strong yields that we're seeing at the moment. 
Consumer staples was another area of strength, so we probably did see a move into those defensive. And property also holding up fairly well. So it does look like the banks, staples, property were the green spots on the market. And the real red spots just came from that commodity space, especially the small cap commodities, where we did see stocks like Murchison, Linus, Brockman Resources, down around that 20% mark in just one session. Julia, just finally, with expectations of the, the Australian dollar to remain you know, at, at depressed levels, if you like, against the US dollar as all this sort of global pessimism continues, would you suggest that a lot of these companies, these stocks with those offshore earnings remain a, a pretty attractive option? I guess it's a balance between the weakness in the Aussie dollar offsetting the FX um, of uh, and the foreign exchange effects that we see from the lower Aussie dollar and balancing that across what's happening in terms of expectations around global growth. And I think the big thing emerging over the last couple of weeks is that the market is starting to price in lower global growth forecasts. We not only saw the IMF slashing, but we have seen manufacturing in China through the flash uh, PMI index, the HSBC index, contraction for, contracting for three consecutive months as well. So I guess it's a little bit of a balance. I think the area to most mostly benefit from that lower Aussie dollar as well as lower growth forecasts for the world is that healthcare space because it is seen as defensive but most of the revenue does come from offshore. All right look we're going to have to